you a box? Yes. What do you need the box for? What kind of box? Box that you can put papers in. Box where you can put papers in? Okay, I can do that. All right. Welcome to RV Woodworks. My name is Raheem and yes, that was my daughter coming home from school on a Friday afternoon with a simple ask for her dad. Daddy, can you build me a box that can hold some paper? And me being the woodworker that I am, I pretty much complicated this about as far as I could take it with the exception of using walnut. Uh, it is a plywood box, um, has nice little handles as well as some nice feet. It has hinges that are inlay. You'll see how I did that in the video. And I put a couple of holes on the sides. And my hope is that she'll take it to school and bring it back home. And when she does, it'll turn into a birdhouse in our backyard. The last thing I wanted to say was a special thank you to my first 1,000 subscribers. I started this not having any hopes of getting more than 100 or 200, but to see it reach over 1,000, it's a dream come true. Thanks again for all those that have subscribed. And if this video gives you any value, please give it that thumbs up button. Or even better, become one of the subscribers. That's all. Let's roll that intro and let's get right into it. This simple miter box was supposed to be a great opportunity to tune up my skills and use up some of the cutoffs laying around in my shop. Little did I know there would be quite a bit of drama with altered expectations from the client. But before we get to that, I started off by finding cutoffs that would give me a near perfect continuous grain around the box and started to cut everything down to a 10 by 10 box. Now, if I had to highlight a star of the show, it would be the miter gauge for this build. It's the Incra miter gauge, and to be more specific, it's the Incra 1000 HD. It seems like every time I use this miter gauge, I fall more and more in love with it. And I've done a setup and review of this miter gauge on my channel, and the link is in the corner if you want to check it out. If you're going to cut angles, or in my case, make a mitered box, a digital angle finder is another tool that is just absolutely indispensable. It makes life so much easier. It's not expensive and honestly pays for itself the first time you get a miter joint right. If you're in the market for one, use the link in the video description below. It'll help the small channel out. After setting up the miter gauge on the right track, I set up the stop block to get a near perfect cut at 45 degrees. Now there's four sides to a box, which means eight cuts, making sure we keep the show face always on top. I think this angle is better to see what I'm talking about. Here you can see that I'm not cutting any portion of the show face. This will help with the continuous grain goal. With all the miters cut, I wanted to do a test fit, but my OCD wanted to ensure that I got all the sides in the right order. Well, there's yet another star of this show and that's painter's tape. You see, painter's tape has just enough flex where you can use it to do a test fit really easily. Look, I'm gonna say this once. 
please don't judge me on the amount of painter's tape I use in a project. You'll see why I said this as the video goes along. Gotta say, it is satisfying to see a minor joint come together so perfectly. With the box coming together, there was only two things left, the lid and the base. I decided to tackle the lid first. Now off camera, I had a conversation with the client, which was obviously my daughter. And she wanted a box to open from the top so that her classmates could add and remove pieces of paper in the box. I designed the box so that it would have a split top design with the hinge so that half the box was stationary and glued to the box and the other having a hinge as well as a handle to open. Little did I know the expectations were about to change. Drama incoming. Daddy, are you done yet? Am I done yet? Come. Your box is almost ready. I just need to cut the lid. But it's going to look something like this. It's going to be like that. And then you can open the lid like this. Nice, right? <laughs> That's nice. But can you make it more like a house? What do you mean a house? Like a roof. Like a roof? Yeah. Like a roof. Okay, I love my daughter. And dare I say, she has me wrapped right around her finger. Now the boss had her own thoughts on what the box was supposed to look like. And how can I say no to her? So here we go. Okay, no worries. It's not a complete loss. I can still use two out of the four sides, but now we need to create two sides that are taller so that she has that roof style box. Now, a roof is usually not 45 degrees, but I didn't feel like calculating the rise over the run or breaking out the Pythagorean theorem. So I kept it simple and created the edges at 45 degrees. Here I'm simply marking the center point of the board and creating a diagonal line at 45 degrees and this is what we're going to cut. Seriously, this miter gauge was a lifesaver for this project. As I make this cut, you can clearly see that my angles were not correct when I drew the line, but thankfully the miter gauge cleaned it up for me. Okay, I need to call something out here. The height of the blade is way too high. Not only am I getting an immense amount of tear out, but this is not a safe practice. Shame on me. Look, the closer the tip of the blade is to the workpiece, the lesser tear out you'll get. Whereas, keeping the blade cool is also very important. Therefore, the happy medium is to have the gullet, which is the gap between the teeth, of the blade be just above the workpiece. At any rate, we are back to the test fit with the roof style box. With the miters fitting good, we can move forward. Hey, it looks like my daughter left me a snack on the edge of the table. Okay, now we can pick up where we left off earlier and create the lid. So for the width, it's really easy since we can simply decide based on the overhang that we're looking for. But for the height, we just have to remember that once we cut the miter, we lose half the depth. This is why I cut it at seven and a half inches and ended up right at the edge of the box. The next morning, the kids went out for a nice breakfast while I stayed back at home and continued working on the box. The next step was to get the edge bending to hide the plywood core. I 
I started by marking all the edges that needed edge bending. Being careful not to apply to any edge that was going to get glued. Pre-glued edge bending is a gift from the woodworking gods. It's honestly the simplest way to jazz up any project. Applying edge bending is so simple. Cut it to size, apply with heat which activates the glue, and then finally cut the access off. Oh, and of course some sanding. And with the edge banding complete, I clamp both the tall sides of the box together to the bandsaw and drill the hole for the birds that will hopefully use this after my daughter brings it back home from school. Okay, with all that out of the way, the last thing that we need to do is to create a base. Painter's tape once again for a dry fit and to get the exact measurements that's required for the base. Alright, that looks like a good fit. Now I didn't want to use screws or nails. So I went the path of creating a groove on each of the sides, half an inch from the end. And the groove itself is going to be a quarter of an inch deep and a quarter of an inch wide. This will allow the MDF panel to slide right in and be used as the base for the box. Now the curve of my blade meaning the width of my blade is one eighth of an inch thick, which just means that I'll run all the sides through once, move the fence a quarter of an inch, and then do it all over again, which will give me the required width, as you can see. With the base complete, it was time to add finish. I wanted to keep it simple so I used spray lager and put on three coats over the span of six hours giving each coat about two hours to dry and lightly sanding between each coat. Actually, the last coat I left overnight to ensure that it completely dried. And there I go using even more painter's tape. But to be fair, you don't want the lacquer getting on all the areas that you're going to put glue on later. So this was kind of a necessity. I realized late night that I forgot to route the channel that which was required to accept the paper. Now ideally, I should have done this before adding finish. And thankfully, I didn't get tear out because of this carbide tip bit that I'm using from Bits and Bits. With that crisis averted, it was finally time to glue up the box. And with that painter's tape, again, but if you try to glue up a miter box without tape on the inside edges, you'll need to sand again, which I can't do anymore because I've already put finish on it. Also, the tape on the outside helps hold the box together, giving me time to get the clamps put on. Oh, and it was late night last night and I forgot to record it, but I added primer as well as white paint to the MDF panel, which is why it's white right now. Do you notice the bead of glue squeezing out from the edges as I applied the pressure and put the box together? That's a good thing. But if I didn't have the painter's tape, that glue would dry and it would be really difficult to sand all that back out again. So I'm glad I used painter's tape. Alright, with the box set aside while the glue sets, 
Let's work on the lid. I started by installing the hinges upside down first because I have a history of chiseling too deep which ruins the look. Now I can't for the life of me remember where I learned this trick but it was on YouTube. If anybody knows please add it to the comment for this video. But I tell you it's a fantastic trick. First, I carefully use a blade and mark the area that needs to be removed. And then I use a chisel to remove the required area for the pin and the barrel of the hinge to fall into the gap. Look at me trying to act like a real woodworker and use a chisel. I got lucky with this one. It's not always this nice. And with a successful test fit, we could replicate this one more time and have the lid completed as well. Did I say one more time? I meant three more times because you would need to do it one per hinge per side of the lid. There's two pieces of the lid and there's two hinges, which means four. The only thing left to do was to screw the hinges in and with that the lid was complete. And the last thing to do was to add these little feet. This will just ensure that the bottom of the box doesn't get scratched up. Yes, it's a pain in the rear end to get rid of all the tape but sure is worth it when you don't have to sand again or clean up the glue. Immensely satisfying. It was late Sunday night and I forgot to record me gluing on the lid, but here's a picture of it. And finally, early Monday morning, the box was complete. Couldn't wait to show it to my daughter. I know it doesn't look like it because it's early Monday morning but she absolutely loved the box and she was ecstatic to take it to school. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you guys in the next build.